Hey everyone! Today's video guide is a little bit different to our normal videos because today we're going to be condensing a two-week road trip up and down the west coast of the United States into the next 13 minutes, highlighting some of the best stops between Portland, Oregon and San Diego, California. There are so many great things to see on the west coast, including world-class cities, national parks, and great beaches, but today we're just going to give you a peek into some of the hidden gems and lesser-known stops to include in your U.S. West Coast road trip itinerary. So stick your out-of-office on and let's check it out. If you saw our last video, you'll know that we were just doing some road tripping in Florida's Gulf Coast. Now it was time to fly over and start the road trip in Portland, Oregon. For this road trip, we'll be driving south through Oregon and California, passing San Francisco, and going all the way down to San Diego. We're going to start out the trip with our first drive south along the main highway, I-5, headed to Ashland, Oregon. The drive time is about five hours, so we made our first stop in Cottage Grove, Oregon. We stopped at this microbrewery that has a cafe as well called Coast Fork Brewery. Cottage Grove is a hidden little gem in its own right, founded in 1887, and it's worth a wander around town for the historic district and the building murals. After that pit stop, we were on the road again, the last few hours through I-5 in Southern Oregon before we reached our first destination, Ashland, Oregon. Ashland is a very small town of only 20,000 people, located just 15 miles north of the California border. It has a reputation for being a very charming town to visit for a few reasons. First, being that it's host to the Oregon Shakespeare Festival and boasts America's first outdoor Elizabethan theater, which has shows year-round. There are some classic Shakespeare plays, crazy versions of classic Shakespeare stories, and also a variety of other shows too. But beyond Shakespeare, Ashland is popular for a number of other things. They've got a charming downtown full of shops, cafes, and restaurants, a beautiful river walk with outdoor restaurants and bars lining it, a pretty downtown park full of running trails and a small lake, cute houses and architecture, but most famously, access to a lot of different outdoor pursuits including things like hiking, skiing, cycling, rafting, kayaking, and more. This little town in Oregon packs a big punch and is totally worth a visit. Shortly after leaving Ashland, you'll cross the border into the state of California. This part of the drive is very pretty as it goes through mountains and forests, as you pass by the Cascade Siskiyou National Monument and then through some flatter land before Mount Shasta comes into view and Interstate 5 takes you through the Shasta Trinity National Forest. Mount Shasta and Lake Shasta are both stunning areas to explore on their own, but we weren't stopping this time as we took a very long drive straight down to outside of San Francisco. After staying overnight in the suburbs of San Francisco at a friend's house, we were headed further south to Paso Robles. Paso Robles is California wine country and our first stop was at Eberly Winery, which is one of the last wineries in the area to offer wine tasting for free, and it comes with a tour of their wine cellars as well. While not quite as famous as the Napa Valley, Paso Robles is very up and coming when it comes to great California wine. In addition to wineries, downtown Paso Robles is also worth exploring. The small town of 30,000 boasts a number of beautiful building murals, historical sites and hotels, and due to the growing increase in tourism to the area, a number of very good bars and restaurants now as well. Check out the California Coast Beer Co. with a great patio area and live music overlooking the old train tracks. But one of the main attractions of the area is the art installation made of light by artist Bruce Monroe known as Sensorio. There are two main exhibits, the Field of Lights and the Towers, and both provide an incredibly unique experience. The fields open as soon as it starts to get dark and a ticket gives you access to the holding area in the beginning where they have food trucks, bar carts, lawn games like horseshoes and cornhole, and fire pits to sit around and then also you get access to walk around the fields and towers at your own pace. The next day we were off again continuing south all the way to San Diego. The beginning of the drive goes through big oil fields with rigs as far as the eye can see. You can see that this section is much drier, like much of inland Southern California. Five hours of driving later and you've arrived in Oceanside, California. The coast between Los Angeles and San Diego is full of great beaches and Oceanside between the two is a great and popular place to stop. For this section, we stopped to visit family around this area and spent the day here exploring the beaches, having food and drinks in the pretty suburban areas, the next day though, we took some time exploring Old Town San Diego. 
There's a lot to see in this preserved historical section of town, including the cemetery El Campo Santo from 1849 that tells a lot of the history of the area and the people buried there, the famously haunted Whaley House, murals that depict life in San Diego in the 17 and 1800s, and of course, lots of bars and restaurants. Old Town San Diego is considered to be the birthplace of California as it was here in 1769 that Father Junipero Serra came to establish the very first mission in a chain of loads of missions that eventually became California's colonization. A great quick coffee stop at Garden Coffee before continuing to explore the rest of Old Town. If you do go to Old Town, don't miss going into the Fiesta de Reyes Market Square, which is one of the liveliest areas of Old Town. They often host live performances, festivals, and live music in this area, which has loads of little shops, a Mexican restaurant, a period saloon, and a historic hotel dating back to 1827. You can even watch how they make fresh corn tortillas, and they'll give you a free one as well. Try to time your visit to match up with the live entertainment. After Old Town San Diego, it was time to explore downtown. We started off exploring the Marina District and Seaport Village. This pretty neighborhood right on the water features a stunning harbor sidewalk and a huge shopping village with plenty of fresh fish and many modern restaurants. Not far from here, you can also make a visit to the USS Midway aircraft carrier where you can see from the outside or tour the actual ship itself, as well as the iconic Unconditional Surrender statue. From here, you can cross the Coronado Bridge for sweeping views back over the harbor and into the city to visit the swanky residential Coronado Island, the neighborhoods around there, and even make a visit to the famous Hotel Dell. Or spend some time exploring the 1200 acre Balboa Park. It was then time for us to have a little more time by the beach before catching our last beautiful sunset over the peninsula ranges and the valley. The next day, it was off to drive an hour north and go do something that's hard to miss when you're in the area, a sunny summer day in Disneyland, located in Anaheim, California. Then we were headed north once more, this time via the coastal highway. Our destination this time was Pismo Beach, a beautiful coastal surfing town located about three hours north of Los Angeles. This small town of about 10,000 is a real hidden gem on California's central coast known for its wineries, monarch butterflies, clams, and of course, its surfing beaches. If you visit, make sure you get out to the pier to catch one of these incredible sunsets. The town itself is also very charming, with much of it set up with a retro 50s vibe, neon signs and all, with every place in town claiming the best clam chowder. Next day's drive was from Pismo Beach to Santa Rosa, California, a drive of about four and a half hours. But today, the drive included an icon as you can see on the screen, San Francisco's Golden Gate Bridge. While we were on a hidden gem search and didn't stay directly in San Francisco for this trip, it was a treat to drive over this gorgeous bridge. We were lucky enough to see it on a day without even any fog. We were planning on stopping at the Golden Gate viewpoint, but the line of cars to even get off the exit to the viewpoint was so long, we unfortunately just had to keep on moving. If you do want to go to that iconic viewpoint, just make sure you plan for a potential wait. We had to keep going north though because we had a night booked somewhere that we were really excited about, a luxury glamping tent at Safari West. Safari West is a 400 acre private wildlife preserve located outside the city of Santa Rosa. While Santa Rosa is known for its wine, Safari West is known for its animals. They have two sections of the park. One, the game reserve, which you can only access by taking a tour or a safari with the park rangers. This is the part of the park where there are zebras, rhinos, wildebeests, and more. But the other part of the park, you can walk around by yourself. And if you're an overnight guest, you can walk around it at literally all hours of the night to see the animals nocturnal activity. They have loads of different animals like lemurs and flamingos, fennec foxes, giraffes, and more. The glamping tents are set up in the trees and are very comfortable and well decorated with electricity and running water. And then, moving even farther north, we head up to the famous California Redwoods and this one log home. There are multiple Redwood state parks and a few different areas in Northern California where you can see the Redwoods, so we're just going to show you a few places that we stopped. This first place was in a very small little hamlet called Piercy, California. 
Not only do they have that one log home, a literal complete home set up inside a single carved out redwood tree, but they also have a cafe and a gift shop, as well as live wood carvers that you can watch. At the same stop, you can also see what's known as the grandfather tree, an 1800 year old redwood. The stop is at the entrance to what is known as the Avenue of Giants, a scenic road that winds through the redwoods and is known as one of the most scenic forest drives in the world. The road is 31 miles long and runs parallel to the faster but less scenic Highway 101 and winds its way north to Humboldt State Park. There are literally endless stop-off points here between campgrounds and riverbanks and various trees that are famous for some reason or another, including ones that you can literally drive your car through. But sites not to miss here include the Founders Grove and the Dyerville Giant, which we're showing you right now. Redwoods are the tallest trees in the world, with the average redwood being around 220 feet or 67 meters tall, and are an average of 2,000 years old. These coastal redwoods, as they're known, can only be found in Northern California and Southern Oregon and are really well worth a visit and a few nights stay. The next day, we were off north once again with the first stop of the day being at a diner near a very pretty beach with tide pools in Trinidad, California. Instead of taking Interstate 5 on the way back up, we opted this time for the much more scenic Highway 101 which winds its way up the rest of the Northern California coast before crossing back over into Southern Oregon. We did have a few seaside rest stops to stay and soaked in the quirkiness of the Oregon coast. Then it was sadly time to finish up the road trip with a final night in a hotel on the river in Brookings, Oregon. Thank you everyone for joining us today on our Hidden Gem West Coast road trip. In all honesty, there are so many ways that you could plan a West Coast road trip, like taking the Pacific Coast Highway for the entirety of the way to see more beautiful places on the coast like Big Sur, Carmel, and Monterey. You could spend time in the stunning national parks of Yosemite and Joshua Tree, or you could spend some time exploring the great cities of San Francisco, Los Angeles, and Portland. But hopefully we inspired you to check out some more off the beaten path destinations. If you're new to our channel, we are the Out of Office Traveler. We're friends from London working nine to fives, but with a major travel hobby. And we try to show you how to find balance and get the most out of your time off. We put out video guides every two weeks on Sundays. So please do subscribe if you enjoyed the video and want to see more or give us a like and a comment below. Our next video is going to start a new, really big series that we've got coming up on a totally different part of the world. So stay tuned for that video drop in two weeks time and we'll see you next time.